Hello, I'm Philip Cameron, and welcome to Daily Faith. Boy, do I have a subject for you today. This is the key to the blessing of God in your life, and I am so thankful that you have joined us because this program is going to be a program of thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is not one day a year. Thanksgiving is an attitude of your heart every second you live. Thankfulness and unthankfulness, that meter inside you determines the flow of God's blessing into your life. I am so pleased to have my daughter, Melody. I got four kids. She's just one of the four. I got four kids, but she's with me today. I am so glad you joined us. Welcome to Daily Faith. Have you ever done something for someone that was unthankful? How many times have you done that and you've said to yourself, well, that's the last time I'm doing that for you? Because unthankfulness is a short circuit, a way to stop blessing in your life. If people bless you and if people love you and care for you and, and, and invest in your life at all, the key of allowing that blessing to flow like a river rather than just like one-time cup is the power of being able to be thankful. Jesus healed 10 lepers. In those days, leprosy was the end of the world. Leprosy made you completely be shunned by your whole town. You lived outside of the village. You, you cried unclean, unclean when en anyone ever came near you. You lost contact with your wife and your kids, your husband. You are completely isolated from everybody. And Jesus came along one day and healed Ten of them. The reason why there was ten, because they're all together, because that's, that's how they lived. They lived in these little cliques of, ab of abandonment, just lost. And Jesus healed ten lepers. And they went to the temple to be cleansed or to be given a, a, a proof of, of being able to go back to the community. And nine of them, all legitimate, all of them had a good reason. They hadn't seen their kids for ages. They wanted to go back and see their kids. They wanted to go back to see their wife or their husband. They wanted to get back in life. They wanted to go back to their employer and say, I can come to work again. All of those are legitimate reasons. Out of 10 people, one came back and thanked Jesus. Now, they all were healed. They all still were healed. But one of them had the blessing of God on his life. And I want to tell you something. My uncle John in Scotland used to say something. It's a tremendous thing. You might want to write this down. To the thankful heart, everything feels like a double portion. Isn't that the truth? If you're thankful for things, everything seems doubly blessed. And I want to talk to you today about being thankful. And I am so thankful that you... Take the time to join with my, Mel, my daughter Melody and I to just to be a part of this family that we have. We've got a great big family, not just here in America. I've got a whole bunch of family in Scotland. If you wonder where my accent's from, I'm Scottish. I've got a whole family. My mom is 90 years of age living in Scotland. And then in Eastern Europe, in Moldova and the Ukraine, we have young people that our ministry rescues from the pit of hell, out of orphanages, out of a, a, just a life of abuse and freezing in the winter time and being hungry all the time. They, they tell me, the kids tell me, all, I never went to bed not hungry. I was always hungry. I used to go to my bed and the kitchens were closed and there was no food. And they would go to bed every night hungry. And, and, and the thankfulness that I see in their faces, when you give them a bed, you give them towels. When they come to our homes, we give them boxes, a welcome box. And in that box is jeans and, sla and, and tops and underwear and, and, and toiletries. And Pajamas and a little bit of makeup. And, and over to you. you all, the <laughs> <laughs> all the girly things. All the stuff. And they've never had it. Never had it. And uh, to be honest with you, for a while, they kind of go overboard and they put on lipstick that you think, oh my, oh my goodness, and their nails are painted every different color, every different day of the week. And they stand at the fridge, just, they just stand at the fridge with the door open, and then they close the door. 
and then they opened the door because <laughs> they've never been able to just go open, open our open What was door. crazy when we, when we yeah. first started these houses, everyone that spoke to us said, you've got to put a lock on the fridge. You've got to lock the fridge. I said, put a lock on the fridge? <laughs> oh, yes, they, these, these children will take every, all the food out of your fridge. I said, well, not that they're sons and daughters. And when they come first, they come and they'll take, if there's a, a, a bowl of oranges, they'll take four or five oranges. And we'll tell them, orphans take four or five or, or, oranges. Sons and daughters take one because they know they'll be there when they go back the next time. And to watch that, the thankfulness. And I want to ask you today, are you thankful for the blessings of God in your life? And there's an old song. I know you know it, and I want you to sing it with me. It's a chorus, and it's just, it's just all about this program. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for giving to me thy great salvation, thy great salvation, so rich and free. Can you sing it with me? Come on, one more time. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul, for saving my soul. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Thank you, Lord, for making me whole. Come on, sing it. Thank you for giving to me, for giving to me thy great salvation, so rich and to the thankful heart, everything yeah. feels like a double portion. Listen to the scripture. In Timothy, 2 Timothy chapter 3, it says, Understand this, in the last days, perilous times will come. Dangerous times will come. For people will be lovers of self. Can you, have you seen that? Are you watching that? Lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, unthankful unholy a sign of the last days we're living in is that we'll have unthankfulness I don't know about you but I, I worry my grandkids I got six grandkids and uh, they are so blessed they all have their and she's got two of them right there so I'm preaching to her as well as you at the moment they all have their, their tablets and they all have little wee cars they drive around I think I bought those so I can't that's my fault. Santa brought them. Santa brought them, okay. Yes. What I'm saying is <laughs> that we have given our kids so much stuff. Yeah. And yet they're never thankful. Every Christmas in Moldova, we give a Christmas of presents to hundreds and hundreds of kids in orphanages. And to watch a young little boy taste chocolate for the first time and sit down beside them and have them break a bar of chocolate and give you half of the first chocolate they've ever tasted. I sometimes wonder, wow, maybe our kids in America are getting so spoiled in our whole life. We are blessed beyond measure. We go to families that have got no, no running water, no indoor toilet, widows that, that are literally the point of freezing to death all, all year, all winter time. And, and, and to watch them be thankful over a, 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 a bottle of oil for cooking and some rice and some just basic things. The Bible wants us to know this, that the last days, a sign of the last days will be thanks, uh, unthankfulness. My dad used to preach a message on unthankfulness when he was alive. It was one of the greatest messages I've ever heard. And it started, he and I were in St. John, New Brunswick in Canada, driving down the road behind our bus. And when the bus stopped and pulled over, we couldn't pass. It was a two-lane road, so we stopped behind the bus. And, and as the bus pulled away, this gentleman with a white cane in front of him was walking quickly down the, the, the sidewalk. And he walked right in, I mean, just bang, into a telephone pole and, and split his head open, 
blood was coming out of his, of his, of his wound. And my dad ran over and put a handkerchief in his hand. And the man was weeping and crying. And he's saying, I don't know where I am. The bus drivers let me off at the wrong stop. And my dad looked into his sightless eyes and he went back in the car and we didn't move. He sat and wept and he said, son, when was the last time we thanked God for our eyesight and our hearing and our power of intellect? When was the last time we thanked God for our parents and our kids? Let me tell you something. If you want God's blessing in your life, if you want God to increase blessing, not in stuff necessarily, but in life, the quality of life, the joy of life, Thanksgiving is not a date on a calendar. It is an attitude of your heart. And I pray for you in the name of Jesus. Lord, make us more thankful. Let us help, help us to complain less and be thankful more. And by doing so, everything in our lives will seem like a double portion in the name of Jesus. I've got a real good book I want you to get. Watch this. Full House. It's time for Household Salvation. We'll help you see your unsaved loved ones in a totally different light. God has given Philip insight into God's promise of household salvation. Do you know that you have a covenant throughout Scripture that promises that your family are part of your eternal inheritance? Philip's family was bound in alcoholism for over 200 years. And through the miraculous story as told in Full House, Jesus saved the Camerons, and in the span of six weeks, 67 of the Cameron family were saved. This book will change your life. Order Full House today and believe with Philip to see what God will do in your family. To order, please visit www.philipdcameron.com or call 1-833-DAILY-FAITH or contact us by mail, post office box 24 2246 Montgomery, Alabama 36124. That book will change your life. Now, listen to me. I want you to listen. This is important. If you make it to heaven and your kids aren't there, it won't feel like heaven. If I, if I make it to heaven and any of my family aren't there, I don't care how well the angels sing and how sparkly the golden streets are. I've been looking for all my family. They're part of my inheritance. The Bible said it's for you and for your children and for your children's children. You have a promise from God. I call it the unclaimed promise. Acts 16, 31 says, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. And you would think that most people have cut, cut the scripture off there, but that's not where it ends. Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you shall be saved, and your household, your family. You have a right to expect God to save your family. You have a right to say to the powers of darkness, get out of my family. You have no rights in my home. And I want to believe God with you. You, you can sin. Let me say, just while I'm thinking about it. People write me all the time and say, Philip, I would love you to pray and believe God with me for household salvation. I'd be honored to do so. We have a P.O. box. I'd like you to get, write this down. It's P.O. Box 242-248, 242-248, Montgomery, Alabama, 36124. And by doing so, if you just send me your, the names of your kids, or your, whatever it is you want, I'll believe God with you. I'll hold them, I promise you. I'll hold them in my hands. In my office back in Alabama, we have an ark. My, my wife's uncle made it. It's a beautiful old ark. And it sits on top of a, a glass box. And we pray for loved ones. And we put them as, symbolically into the ark. There's a door on the side of this wee ark. And we put them into the ark. And we, we, that's a, a statement of faith that our families are going to be in the ark of safety when that great day comes. So get the book. And then write me and give me the names of your loved ones so I can start believing God with you for a tremendous revival. Two young boys came to our town in Scotland, had 96 converts in six weeks. 67 of them were from an alcoholic family called the Camerons. If God can save us, I know that God can save you. Part of our ministry, part of the heart of what we do, one is household salvation. 
And two is going to those that no one cares about. The fatherless, the orphan, those that have been abandoned by parents that have been caught up in alcohol. Terrible situation in the countries of Moldova and Eastern Europe. Moldova has the highest percentage of alcoholism in the world. More alcoholics per population in Moldova than anywhere else on earth. It is the unhappiest place on earth, voted the unhappiest place on earth. And right at the, the bottom of this horrendous mess, young boys and girls are abandoned by their parents. They go abroad for jobs or whatever. And, and they're just, the kids are forgotten. And they end up in an orphanage. And every day they're told, you are nothing. Your mom doesn't love you. Your father doesn't want you. No one cares about you. We don't care about you. You're garbage. Every day, this beating of their mind. And we find them and we take them into homes that we have in Moldova. We have just opened up right now, uh, a pu purchased, it's not open yet, but we've, we've finished the purchase of an amazing place called Vatra Village. It's a village, it was built originally for rich folks. And it's about 100 yards from the largest lake in the whole country. And all the ceilings are all fancy and stuff. And, and what happened was they, they tried to clean up the lake from algae and they put chlorine, truckloads of chlorine in this lake, kill the fish, kill the algae, and kill this development. And these houses were sitting for nine years, and we bought them, and the Lord has just allowed us to pay for them. We are so thankful. And right now, we're, we're in the process of furnishing them. And to watch God do crazy things in our ministry. So the heart of our ministry is to care for these kids. One of our girls is called Maria. I think you'll be blessed when you hear her testimony. Watch this. Hello, my name is Maria. I was born in Moldova. I became deaf when I was seven months old. I have two brothers. They are older than me and one sister that is younger. My father is an alcoholic. He used to beat my mother and us for no reason. Because of hard life, my mother left me in an orphanage, in Cahul. She said she would come back to see me, but she never did. She abandoned me. It wasn't easy to me to get used to the orphanage, but after a while, I started to like learning, playing with other children. One day, when we had a school holiday, my mother came to take me home for a few days. I never felt safe because of my father always was drunk. I was full of fear. Getting home, I stayed silently so my father couldn't see me. When I was invited at orphan's hands, I was full of joy. I knew there was family but no sign language and loves deaf people. Here I could finish my cooking and massage courses successfully. Our house is full of deaf girls. We speaking the same language, sign language, and we praise God through science. I am so thankful for God never left me. Thank you. I love you. Maria came to our deaf home, and uh, the great news about her life is since that video message was made, she just got married, and she has found a lovely Christian boy, and they are, they are just newly married, and to watch someone come in that has had a life of, of physical abuse, and then on top of that being deaf in a horrendous uh, orphanage system, to watch her come into us and stand on our feet, and then begin to minister, what happened was they became part, of the, our deaf kids became part of a ministry to, to deaf kids and the crazy thing is now that they're ministering in the deaf community married and that would never have happened if we hadn't had a place for them to come awareness now listen this is important to hear me say this awareness does not work all of these kids in the orphanage know about trafficking but when they're put on the street at 16 and they've nowhere to go and someone drives up in a car and says, I've got an uncle in Italy who has a restaurant or, 
or I'm looking for a ba a woman will come up and say, I'm looking for a babysitter and we'll give you $50 a month and a place to stay. They know about trafficking. They're aware of the trafficker. But desperation pushes them to make the decision to go. And once they've gone, they're gone forever. We have tried numerous times to take kids back from trafficking and try to fix, and, and, and there's just no fixing them. They are so destroyed. We, we, have, we have never managed. So what our ministry decided to do was rather than build a morgue at the bottom of the cliff, build a hospital at the top of the cliff. And that's what the orphan's hands does. We have homes that these young folk come from the orphanage to us. Instead of being put on the street, they come to us. A bed is what they need. An education is what they need. Their own clothes. In their, this may seem nothing to you, but to them to have their own chest of drawers and clothes that they can wear the same clothes and have them washed in the same, because in the orphanage, they're just thrown on the ground, a great big pile. pile. Yeah, and they were told to, that's what they do after laundry day, they would just dump everything in the room, and they would say, all right, get your, you know, take what you can. And, my, and they fight for it. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they had to fight, and they'd, you know, be lucky if they'd ever get the same outfit more than once. So nothing, they never had anything of their own. And even when we would um, go in and visit them in orphanages and bring them gifts, as soon as we would walk out the door, the teachers would take the items that they got in their boxes. So I mean, really never had anything. And that's, and that's another point. What, what we've discovered is we used yeah. to bring boxes and, and it, was, it, it, it ended up after the joy of getting a box. We, they told us as they come to the, the, the houses that after we left, the bullies and the teachers took all their stuff away. And they just a second or two glimpse of, of a, a toy and, and stuff in the, before it was taken away. And nowadays, because our kids are on the ground and our kids are former orphans themselves, when we give a gift, they know, they go to the people and say, listen, this has got to stay where this, we're coming back tomorrow and better still be here. So it's changed so much. But Maria is, is just like so many of the kids that come to us with no hope, no future, no destiny. And along with the gospel, which is just permeable all through the home, that's the gospel is the baseline of everything. Bible studies and prayer meetings, that just takes place all the time. The kids that are Christian, the older kids, literally just take the new ones under the wings and, and show them the gospel. But what happens is they come to us as orphans. And as soon as we can, we get them out giving things away because an orphan is never given anything. They only get. And we give them, and we, we, we will take, we'll adopt a village and go to the, all the widows of the, of, the orf, of the village and give them food and clothes and coal in the wintertime. And these orphans that have always been receiving start giving. And the giving is what changes their minds. It changes how they see things. They get more excited about giving stuff away than anybody else because they know how it is to receive. And by doing so, it's the most amazing transformation that we turn them from orphans into sons and daughters, that they get excited. I get phone calls almost every day saying, Dad, we've got, we can, can we do this? Can we reach this? Can we go there? Can we fix this? It's a never-ending um, attack on, on poverty and, and, and helping those in need. And then, of course, the most wonderful thing is that they share the gospel. We need your help. We've just opened Vatra Village or bought Vatra Village. We're hoping to open it according to uh, the, the response that you give us. Every house, we have six houses in this village, will need 120 people giving a dollar a day to support it. You can give a life, a, a life, an eternal life, to a, a, a young girl like Maria for a dollar a day. Every 120 people that watch this program and say, I want to send and I'll be a part of this thing. Your dollar a day allows us to open the doors, take more kids in. Maria came through our ministry for one reason and one reason only. Someone else was giving a dollar a day. Vatra Village will now take 90 more kids, and we need your help. Will you pray? Will you ask God right now, Father, if this is your will for me to be a part of this miracle, I ask you, Lord Jesus, Speak to my heart to respond. The number on your screen is your contact to us. 
1888 daily faith and you can give right there and say listen this is for vatra village and i'll be waiting for your call and you're giving and talk about thankfulness dad in in god's hand is everything that we all need and we get to be a part of being his hands we're i'm thankful to be a part Absolutely. i'm thankful to be used by him i'm thankful that he allows me who am i but he allows us instead he could do it by himself but he includes us in in that i'm thankful for that i love you i love my daughter's heart for the gospel i love it we need your help a dollar a day will allow us to open one of the houses 120 people an upper room experience we need your help bye-bye for today for over 25 years, the Cameron family has been changing the lives of orphans in Romania and Moldova. From providing running water, flushing toilets, and clean wells, to coal for heat, new windows, as well as food and clothing, they champion the physical needs of the orphans in these broken and desolate countries. Many of Moldova's orphans are saved from the horrors of trafficking through homes founded by the Camerons, and in the process, Orphans become daughters and sons. They come to know their heavenly Father and are forever changed by the love of Jesus. God helped the Camerons lift these amazing young men and women out of darkness. Now, no longer orphans, they want to return and invade that very same darkness with the light of Jesus Christ. The Orphan's Hands equips these daughters and sons to become missionaries. Your monthly gift of $31 will allow us to rescue and take in more girls and boys, saving them from the hell of human trafficking. Your monthly partnership will allow us to care for those in the Orphan's Hands homes in Moldova and the Ukraine. When you partner with us on a monthly basis, giving a dollar a day, you will receive every 30 seconds, a testimonial book of the lives changed by the Orphan's Hands. If you want to join Philip and Chrissy in taking care of these precious young people, please contact us today by calling 833-DAILY-FAITH. You can also give by going online to philipdcameron.com or by writing to Post Office Box 242246, Montgomery, Alabama, 36124. So many lives depend on what we do. Thank you for loving the lost. Philip would love to hear from you. If there is a need for prayer in your life and you want him to pray for your unsaved loved ones, reach out to Philip at 833-DAILY-FAITH. We believe for great things for you. Contact him today. If you are a pastor, church leader, or business owner and would like to have Philip Cameron come and speak to your church, conference, or event, please call 1-833-DAILY-FAITH or go to pastors.philipdcameron.com or request by mail at attention Andrew Cameron, Post Office Box 242246, Montgomery, Alabama 36124.